Welcome back to our second Intro to Battle Mechs video. We are working our way through the eight mechs contained in the A Game of Armored Combat box set, going by lowest to highest tonnage. We have already covered the lightest mech in the box, at 20 tons, through our Locust video, but this time we are covering an older mech at 25 tons, the Commando. Soon after stealing the original battle mech plans from the Terran hegemony during Operation Prometheus, the Lyran Commonwealth found themselves in a unique spot with a distinct technological advantage over the other great houses. However, this was to be temporary. This event repeated itself as the Draconis Combine then stole the plans from the Lyrans, which were then stolen by defectors from the Combine by the Free Worlds League, to be repeated until it seemed every power had access to battle mech technology. The Lyran Commonwealth, fearing to be outdone by the other great houses, had Coventry Defense Conglomerate, now known as Coventry Metalworks, begin development on their first scout mech, to be known as the Commando. The prototype, the COM-1A, was built with a single Odin heavy laser as its only weapon, which was later found to have a critical flaw. The persistent heat from the laser would cause lubricants in the mech's right hand and wrist to decay, causing its arm to seize and operate improperly, leading Coventry to experiment with a missile-based system for the next model, the COM-1D, and perhaps perfected in the most common commando variant, the COM-2D. While the COM-1A was initially designed as a scout mech to primarily be used for recon, further incarnations of the commando were mostly designed as strikers, with the intention of getting in fast to short to medium range and hitting hard, relying on speed to protect them. They were also commonly used to hunt other scouts. Here, we will go over the various designs of the Commando, which have been updated fairly regularly since its inception. In this video, we will take a look at the variants produced from the Star League era through the Clan Invasion era, starting with the Star League. Produced in 2463 by Coventry Defense Conglomerate for the Lyran Commonwealth, we have the COM-1A. This original prototype model was equipped with a fusion engine which would now be considered primitive, giving this unit a walking speed of 5 and a running speed of 8, which is a bit slower than the commandos produced after. Armed with a single large laser in its right arm, the 1A would do well against other light mechs of the time, doing enough damage in a single shot to cripple most. With 10 heat sinks, the 1A has just enough heat dissipation to barely dump its heat if it ran and fired in a single turn. This 475 BV original plays the role of Scout. Produced in 2480, the irregularly used COM-1D variant is considered a transitional mech between the original prototype and the much more common 2D model. The standard fusion engine gives the 1D a 6.9 speed, slightly faster than its predecessor. Armed with one SRM-6 and a large laser, this variant has plenty of firepower and range versatility for a 25-ton mech, but this comes at a cost. With 10 heat sinks, the COM-1D will need to alternate firing the SRM and laser, or even standing still for a round it will begin to generate excess heat. This overheating problem, combined with its meager three tons of armor, made this an unpopular model among mech warriors. This 558 BV variant plays the role of Striker. Produced in 2486, the highly popular COM-2D was developed by Coventry Defense Conglomerate, the Lyran Commonwealth were so impressed with this model, they pulled every political and corporate string they possibly could to keep this variant exclusive to themselves. The standard fusion engine gives the 2D a 6.9 speed. Armed with an SRM-6, an SRM-4, and a medium laser, 
each sharing the same range profile, the COM-2D is much more focused than the 1D. The 10 heat sinks are not quite enough to fire all weapons and move in the same round to sink all heat, but the number of weapons still allows options. With multiple SRMs, the 2D can pepper its target in multiple locations each weapon attack turn. Combined with an initial attack from the medium laser, this can easily farm critical hits on opposing light battle mechs. This 541 BV variant plays the role of Striker. Now let's take a look at a handful of commando variants developed and produced in the next Battletech era, the Succession Wars. Produced in 3015, the COM-1B keeps the standard fusion engine and the walking speed of 6 and running speed of 9. Experimenting with re-implementing the large laser seen in the first couple of incarnations of the Commando, the 1B is equipped with one SRM-2, the aforementioned large laser, and an additional medium laser. The SRM-2 and medium laser each share a range profile, but the large laser gives this variant a longer range with a moderately powerful weapon. However, the 10 heat sinks on the COM-1B are not nearly enough to manage the heat generated from a full salvo attack, especially if the mech generated any heat from moving, which is a light mech, it most definitely should, to avoid attack. This 616 BV variant plays the role of Striker. Produced in 3020, the COM-1C has a standard fusion engine and the usual 6-9 speed. Armed with an AC-2 and a medium laser, this incarnation does best at a distance as the autocannon has a short range of 8 and a long range of 24 and includes a minimum distance. While this variant does not do much overall damage, at maximum of 7 split between two locations with all weapons, it can start its attack from much further away. Heat management is not an issue, as the 10 heat sinks are more than enough to dissipate any heat generated from running and gunning each turn. This 458 BV variant plays the role of Striker. Produced in 3025, the popular COM-3A is one of the very few commando variants officially supported by the Lyran Commonwealth. The 3A has a standard fusion engine at a speed of 6-9. Giving up a bit of armor, this variant is equipped with two SRM-6s, a flamer, and a medium laser, giving the 3A quite a bit of short-range versatility and damage spread. This variant is best used in short skirmishes, as its shortage of ammunition for its short-range missiles causes them to dry up fast. Also, Heat management can be an issue as the 10 heat sinks installed are not nearly enough to cover all weapons fire, let alone the addition of movement. This 540 BV variant plays the role of Striker. Finally, let's take a look at a commando produced during the clan invasion era. Produced in 3050, the COM-5S sees many structural upgrades from previous variants. This mech is installed with ferrofibrous armor and endosteel. The addition of cellular ammunition storage equipment means a critical hit to the commando's ammunition will less likely bring instant destruction. Still equipped with a standard fusion engine, the 5S still has a speed of 6-9. Armed with an SRM-6, a Streak SRM-2, and a medium laser, all with the same range profiles, give the COM-5S plenty of accuracy and damage at short range. With only 10 heat sinks, the COM-5S just barely lacks the heat dissipation needed when running and gunning with all weapons each turn. If the mech has a safe opportunity to walk, an Alpha Strike is no issue. This 557 BV variant also plays the role of Striker. When playing with the optional rule of design quirks, the commando uses these. Narrow or low profile, which makes the commando harder to hit. 
and exposed actuators, which makes attacks to the commando's legs by infantry more effective. The detailed rules for these design quirks can be found in the Battle Mech Manual. There are quite a handful of variants of the commando produced beyond the clan invasion era, which implement the advanced technology of the times, such as double heat sinks, to deal with the heat issues common to the commando. There is also a clan variant, the Commando 2C, produced around the beginning of the Succession Wars era. Remember, the Commando has the speed and firepower to counter light mechs, and can be quite dangerous in numbers, but, as light mechs themselves, they have mostly paper-thin armor, and a single hit from a moderately powerful weapon can ruin their day. Use them to counter, harass, and keep them moving, as most don't have the ability to make things happen from a distance. Thanks for watching video number two in our Intro to Battle Mechs videos. Hopefully it was entertaining and informative. As mentioned at the top of the video, we are kicking these off with the mechs contained in the A Game of Armored Combat box. If you have any other mech suggestions you would like to see covered in this format, let me know in the comments. Speaking of comments, please feel free to leave feedback. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button, or maybe consider subscribing. In the next video, we will take a look at the Shadowhawk. Take care of yourselves, we'll see you next time.